Hi, and welcome to Experience Points by University XP. On Experience Points, we explore different ways we can learn from games. I'm your host, Dave Ang, from Games-Based Learning by University XP. Find out more by going to universityxp.com. On today's episode, we'll cover applied games-based learning. Games-based learning can be a powerful tool for educators. That's because it allows them to use established games for teaching, learning, training, and education. But how exactly do you apply games-based learning? What specific learning outcomes can you target? What games are specifically available to meet the needs of your students? This episode will review the use of games-based learning, as well as reiterate the main reasons why you should consider using it in your teaching and instruction practice. In addition, games-based learning as a student-centered approach will be discussed, as well as how gameful applications can be explored in education. Applying games-based learning for specific knowledge domain mastery will be discussed in depth, specifically games related to empathy, chemistry, biology, physics, government, arithmetic, sustainable practices, research, software operations, and procedures will be covered in depth. So why should you even consider using games for teaching and learning? Some of the most popular responses involve tricking students into engaging with material as they play a game, but that is often a short-sighted goal. Instead, educators should consider using games as another educational tool that provides a structure to engage all students in a shared learning experience. Such an experience can now be implemented and explored no matter what the instructional modality, be it in person, remote, or through hybrid learning. Specifically, educators have most frequently turned to serious games. These games exist as a means of teaching and learning rather than for only fun or entertainment. Serious games have been around for centuries and have seen updates and revisions based on societal and technical breakthroughs. However, the main condition that hampers serious games or more pervasive usage is the necessity to build and construct them based on the needs of students and their learning outcomes. Despite this, there is a great reason to combine teaching, learning, and games. For games possess the structure necessary for students to reach specific masteries in different knowledge domains. Some of those masteries can be as diverse as social and emotional learning, which can serve as a catalyst for achieving greater, higher level functions. Games remain a powerful tool for learning. However, they need to be used holistically with other approaches for teaching and instruction that meaningfully and authentically creates environments for engagement and play between other students and the content. This is specifically the case because games-based learning serves as a structure for teaching and learning that supports and scaffolds students' mastery. Such an experiential learning focus is also found in other forms of engaging educational experiences, such as internships, externships, study abroad, and outdoor education. Games-based learning is student-centered learning through an experiential process. Student-centered learning considers multiple factors which influence and affect play. Those include the student's motivations, intrinsic, extrinsic, or both, for engagement. This format also includes specific goals that the learner may have throughout the educational process. This is most closely observed through socio-emotional learning, where the content and context of the outcome is embodied through an experience and through a type of engaging medium, such as games. This engaging medium is most successful as students are provided the agency to create, innovate, and problem solve within the game environment. The engaging environment of games also provide a feedback loop and mechanism which drives students to explore, experiment, test, and achieve things that have different impacts and outcomes. Some of those outcomes will ideally align with the outcomes set forth by the instructor. Otherwise, those outcomes could be extraneous or auxiliary to what is meant to be achieved. Despite these outcomes, the instructor should follow a strict active debriefing process for helping students make meaningful sense of their experiences. This is no more evident than through empowering students to create their own games which address how they make sense, structure, and formulate their experiences within the framework of a game. Student-created games have the additional outcome where students can connect their course or content outline with the principles of game design and games-based learning. Such an approach also allows individual students to simultaneously address the content and context of courses through diverse and different learning styles. Applying games-based learning is less about using games in a teaching practice and more about taking a gameful approach to teaching and learning as a whole. This means giving students more agency in the decision-making process of what to learn as well as how to learn it. 
What makes this approach difficult is the autonomy that some instructors have to give up when taking a games-based learning approach. That is why some instructors often turn to gamification first. Gamification is the application of game-like elements in non-game settings, whereas games-based learning relies on games as the medium for teaching and learning. Students play the game to meet specific instructor-indicated outcomes. Therefore, serious games are designed in order to help students meet these goals specifically, rather than instructors repurposing games for entertainment into educational use. What makes serious games difficult to develop for educators is the curricular path and plan that aligns game content, structure, and scaffolding with specified learning outcomes. However, unlike traditional approaches to teaching and learning, games-based learning can also capitalize on social connections with other students, as well as relationships built with the instructor in order to meet learning outcomes. These connections build upon social and cultural influences that positively affect gameplay. Serious games are most effective when actual game mechanics reflect the learning mechanics of the instructor's pedagogy. The serious game is much more relevant and representational of the instructor's stated outcomes when learning outcomes are mapped specifically to these game mechanics. The tight coupling between the learning outcomes and game mechanics is necessary because without such a relationship, students may be intrinsically motivated to play the game but not necessarily learn. This can be detrimental to the entire instructional process and can undermine the application of games-based learning. Applied games-based learning takes the games, the instructor's approach, and learning outcomes together in order to meet the goals of the course. This often begins with the rules of the game, which provides a context for interaction, as well as sets the tone for the magic circle of the game and how players are expected to act within it. Often, the implementation of small or light rule sets makes the game much more approachable and applicable for students and learners. This is the case because smaller rules overhead combined with greater variations of play require students to design their own strategies to handle the evolving situation within the game. These strategies are used to greatest effect when discussed in the active debriefing that follows a play session. Talking about how the game went, as well as what actions individual students took within the game, is critical to developing meaning as well as forming personalized conclusions for students. This represents a vital component of experiential teaching with games. In addition, instructors can also launch directly into gameplay without revealing the need or nature of the game to students beforehand. The instructor can then use the time during active debriefing to discuss the experience and how the game's context relates to the content of a course. Many games focus on soft skills development for students and how outcomes achieved through games can help with specific areas such as critical thinking and emotional intelligence. However, there's also a need for applied games-based learning that helps students meet specific outcomes in different knowledge domains. The following includes a series of games that may be used by instructors to fulfill the needs of students in the areas of connected empathy, chemistry, biology, physics, government, civics, arithmetic, sustainable practices, research, software operations, and rules and procedures. The following game examples are not meant to be exhaustive. Rather, this list provides an overview of games available for instructors to meet students' needs in specific knowledge domains. Empathy can often be a challenging concept to describe and demonstrate. That's because unlike other knowledge domains, empathy involves developing the capacity to understand what another person is feeling from their frame of reference. It can often be difficult to place ourselves in another person's position, especially if we have never been in their position before, or at least cannot recognize the differences in position between us and them. This is what makes Papers, Please such an interesting and challenging take on this demonstrated empathy. Papers, Please is a simulation video game developed by Locus Pope and published through 3909 LLC. It was first released in August 2013 and involves the player role-playing the duties of the border crossing immigration officer. The game takes place in a dystopian Eastern Bloc kind of country called Arstrotska, which finds itself in challenging political relationships with its neighboring countries. The player performs their duties at an immigration checkpoint where they must review each individual that wishes to enter the country and check their passports and supporting documentation against a growing list of rules and guides. The player has to perform the duties of this immigration officer to allow people in with proper paperwork, to reject those without the right documentation, and to detain individuals with falsified information. 
While the theme and core loop of Papers, Please may not seem that interesting, it does put the player in the roles of individuals who may have never interacted with before or never wished to be. Through these actions, the player visualizes and observes the challenges of individuals attempting a border crossing by connected empathy with other individual desires, motivations, and reasons for moving between nation states. In addition, Papers, Please creates a world through which players can experientially test these circumstances through role-playing within the magic circle of the game. While the designer never intended to create a game that embodied this type of connected empathy, instructors could use the game in order to provide students with a demonstrable scenarios in which individual goals and motivations are not too dissimilar. Similarly, holding on the troubled life of Billy Kerr places the player in a position of authority in order to provide care for a terminally ill patient, Billy Kerr. Kerr plays the non-player character of the game who has been rushed to the player's hospital following a massive heart attack during a Sydney to London flight. The game begins with players knowing only the patient's name, his age, and the fact that he only has days to live. Holding on, The Troubled Life of Billy Kerr is a cooperative tabletop game in which all players must work together to provide appropriate care for their patient, responding to medical emergencies, and gaining his trust through his final days. The game is played over 10 different scenarios where you learn increasingly more about Billy Kerr's past. Your role is to help him find the courage to confront the regrets that keep him holding on. The theme and play of this game is dark as it forces players to deal with the ideas of dying and regret. However, it does so in a potentially neutral and collaborative way as players need to work with one another to help ease the suffering of the non-player character, Billy Kerr. Unlike Papers, Please, players can communicate and work with one another in order to determine the best course of action, given what you know about the character, in order to help Billy Kerr achieve peace in his final days. Areas of chemistry, biology, and physics are often the topics of choice when creating games for teaching and learning. No more is this the case with tabletop games that help players reach and achieve the same learning outcomes taught in many secondary schools through more traditional instruction. Covalence is one such game where players work together cooperatively to recreate several different organic components. This tabletop game is broken up by information discrepancy. This means that one player plays the part of the knower who has the knowledge of the organic compound to be created, while the other players represent the builders and must deduce what these components are based on clues given by the knower. Covalence works within this cooperative framework in order to challenge players to use a limited number of clues available to build these different organic compounds before time runs out. While chemistry is taught both at a theoretical and experiential level in most classrooms, Covalence goes one step further by challenging players with a structure of information incongruence, thereby relying on players to deduce the structure of different organic compounds based on what they know and what they can construct given the teamwork demonstrated by the knower. Likewise, Cytosis, a cell building game, is a game that challenges players to compete against one another using one of modern tabletop gaming's most celebrated mechanisms, worker placement. Here, players dive deeply into a human cell to learn how it functions, divides, and eventually replicates. The worker locations represent different functions and resources of cells such as mRNA and ATP. In addition, different worker spots allow players to convert resources, build enzymes, hormones, and receptors that eventually help players score health points to win the game. Cytosis, a cell building game, takes the structure and actions of a cell and replicates it in a way that provides players with both an overview and agency of what they want to do and how they can accomplish it given the constraints in the game. It provides not only a robust analysis of cellular operations, but does so in a way that fulfills the gaming needs of modern tabletop gamers in a package that entertains as well as educates. Lastly, the Kerbal Space Program is a video game that incorporates space flight simulation, was developed by Squad and published by Private Division for various platforms. Players take on the role of a director of a space program that is staffed and crewed by humanoid creatures known as Kerbals. The game's claim to fame is a realistic orbital physics simulation which provides real-life orbital maneuvers and allows players to experiment with different aspects of orbital mechanics. Simulations exist as a way for learners to try and experiment with different concepts and phenomena. 
Nowhere is this more the case than with the Kerbal Space Program, which expertly takes such advanced physical concepts and provides them in a sandbox environment for players to experiment and play with. The result of which is a simulation that can demonstrate concepts more easily and experientially using students' own agency. Often, finding games that teach or reinforce hard sciences is easy. What is not so easy is finding games that properly and structurally teach students about government and civics. That's Your Right answers this need by providing a venue for teaching students the U.S. Bill of Rights in a browser-based multiplayer game. That's Your Right can be played either single-player or as a multiplayer game. It is flexible in either format as it challenges players' knowledge and application of the first 10 amendments of the United States Constitution, also known as the Bill of Rights. As such, this game was designed with the Annenberg Classroom's Comprehensive Constitution Curriculum as a focus and primary learning outcome. That's Your Right's game mechanics are most closely influenced by Blizzard's Hearthstone, which in turn is influenced by Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering. The game's core loop involves players correctly playing cards that correspond to constitutional rights. Correct answers score points while simultaneously eliminating opponents' cards. The game's completely free offering with no in-game purchases makes it an accessible choice for many educators. Additionally, Argument Wars offers players the opportunity to test students' persuasive abilities arguing actual U.S. Supreme Court cases. As another browser-based game, players compete against one another to craft the strongest argument. Famous U.S. Supreme Court cases include Bond v. United States, Brown v. the Board of Education, Gideon v. Wainwright, and Texas v. Johnson. The game is available for play in both Spanish and English. While focused on application for younger audiences, Argument Wars still provides a visceral and applicable take on the different facets, opinions, and mitigating factors that influence some of the most important U.S. Supreme Court decisions in history. Its browser-based and free-to-play format also makes this game an accessible choice for many educators. Sometimes the earliest examples of games for teaching and learning appear for children when they experience the basics of mathematics and arithmetic. Some of the most applicable examples of this knowledge domain for these young students are arithmetic games such as Mathemagician's Duel. In the board game Mathemagician's Duel, students create thematic incantations from several cards in their hands. They do this to cast spells on their opponents in order to reduce their magical strength to zero. These incantations are created by using magical energy cards, the numerals in the game, and magic symbol cards representing operators. This is done in line with arithmetic operations so that when read from left to right, add up to the cast value of the chosen spell. Therefore, each successfully cast magical spell reduces the opponent's magical strength by a specific amount. Mathemagician's Duel does an excellent job marrying theme with learning outcomes and helping younger players practice mental math skills as well as working memory as they calculate the value of incantations to the greatest effect against their opponents. In addition, the board game Lucky Numbers takes an even simpler approach to numbers and probability by requiring players to draw and play numbers that fit within their own personal grid. Players' personal grids provides an intimate form of personal scale and agency in the game. Players must place numbers so that each one, left to right and top to bottom, is greater than the ones prior to it. Players must also note the boards of their opponents for numbers that they cannot or choose not to play on their boards become available for their opponents to place. Lucky Numbers is not an educational game or serious game per se. However, the structure of the game and the simple but puzzly core loop provides players with interesting choices for pulling, placing, and passing on numbers that they draw. Teaching, education, and instruction targeted at climate change and overall more sustainable practices is growing in demand. Thus, there have been greater proliferation of serious games that address these specific and critical issues. One such game is Loop, which stands for The Life of Ordinary People. This tabletop game focuses on multiple aspects of climate change and consumption that are driven by personal practices of individuals. Those contribute to things like smog, plastic pollution in oceans, and food waste in landfills. The game identifies the need, desires, and end goals of consumerism and consumption on both a personal and societal level. Individually, it examines players' needs to consume to improve quality of life to become happier, ultimately as a way to spend the resources that we generate through work and labor. Player actions ultimately inform a larger and more nuanced discussion. 
However, the tabletop game loop identifies the importance of what discussion and provides an engaging, positive, and intuitive way to examine consumerism and its impacts on environmentalism and sustainability. Players take on the role of ordinary people who are tasked and challenged with breaking out of this familiar, but often vicious, expectations of consumerism, which encompasses working, buying, and consuming. Players compete in the tabletop game to strategically complete activities to achieve personal goals while simultaneously utilizing specific careers, special abilities, and favor cards to achieve satisfying combos. A more pointed example of a serious game that addresses climate change is Greenhouse, which is a cooperative tabletop game aimed at simulating real-world solutions to address familiar climate events. Greenhouse plays as a turn-based cooperative card game where players draw cards to reveal a climate event that they must address. Some of those events include real-life catastrophes such as hurricanes, disease outbreaks, and wildfires. Players then play action cards called Climate Solutions, which affect a communal pool of resources such as greenhouse gases, money, and hope. This is a cooperative tabletop game. Therefore, players will collectively lose the game if they collect too many greenhouse gas tokens or if they run out of money, hope, or event cards. Players can win if they work and cooperate with one another to eliminate all of the greenhouse gas tokens in the game. Like Loop, the game also includes momentum opportunities that allow players to create satisfying combos with other cards to increase positive game effects. Greenhouse offers several different variants for students to play, which include single player, cooperative, and role playing versions where students can embody different stakeholders in the climate change circles, such as families, corporations, governments, and nonprofits. Perhaps one of the areas that could use the most help and guidance for students is how to conduct thorough and critical academic research. Anyone who has had to look through a database knows that this can be a daunting challenge. However, Search and Destroy takes the concept of developing search strings and gamifies it into a card game. Search and Destroy is a multiplayer card game that is most appropriately used for librarians and teachers who want their students to improve their database searching skills. Turns for the game move quickly with the active player drawing two keyword cards and choose to display one of them. The active player may then play a single action or mod card which may or may not affect themselves or another player. The real crutch of the game comes from when the active player searches for the terms on the card in an actual library or academic database of the instructor's choice in order to determine the result. Players can be eliminated from the game when their database search yields no results, which can happen given the different kinds of action and mod cards. The player left alive becomes the winner. While the core loop and central actions of the game are very basic, Search and Destroy does well in illustrating the main outcome of developing successful database search strings. Therefore, Search and Destroy is best for helping students determine keyword selections and experience basic Boolean searching when conducting academic research. While not always discussed in many education circles, the first year or freshman year experience dialogue course can serve as an impactful part of a student's first term in higher education. Enrolled embodies the necessary aspects and outcomes of this class, which can have positive effects from students' participation. Enrolled is a tabletop game that gives students a common experience to discuss and engage to further development of their understanding and relation of different factors that affect their own student experience. Those often include divisive topics such as student debt, complicated ones such as degree requirements, and more philosophical questions such as those surrounding course and degree options. Furthermore, random life events also find their way into games of Enrolled, which further replicate the first year student experience. Enrolled is played in a semi-cooperative environment. Here, players accumulate debt each turn with the end game goal of meeting all the requirements of their indicated degree. A player may win the game by graduating first with the least amount of student debt. Perhaps one of the most cogent areas where both educators and students see games used regularly for teaching and learning is through hard skill development and software operations. Many may remember games such as Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing as our first interaction with learning games. Many different games have iterated on this aspect over the years, and now there are a slew of different options that teach different software operation skills. One such game is Data Defender, is a free and online browser-based game which skillfully teaches students how to use shortcuts for Microsoft Excel to their advantage. 
While the applications of such a game may be limited to specific and select groups of students, Data Defender takes the accomplishment of these learning outcomes seriously through the application of a serious game that ramps quickly in difficulty in order to test students' mastery of Excel software operations. Similarly, the typing of the dead overkill provides a more modern and contemporary adaptation of the skills developed in Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing, but with the severe level of urgency encapsulated in a survival horror game. The Typing of the Dead Overkill provides comedic overtones compared to other horror games by using the theme of the House of the Dead series and combines it with a typing mechanic that requires players to keyboard specific words and phrases in order to defeat the monsters and zombies in the game. Thematically, the need to type makes no sense. However, the material and application of the typing mechanic makes the game enticing and challenging for even recalcitrant typing students. Learning different rules, policies, and procedures is often the task of human resources professionals and others who work for corporate training, learning, and development. It's often not an enviable task, but it is necessary and critical for teaching new employees how an organization works and the proper protocols in place for completing their duties successfully. The Tesco Compliance Board Game helps new employees at Tesco learn about the company and how to comply with its many policies and procedures. It's unique as a board game that has been developed digitally using Articulate Storyline. The game puts new employees through their paces in developing knowledge and learning new skills for everything. Content ranges from handling fire safety issues to new employees onboarding. The Tesco Compliance board game includes regularly seen formal game elements such as bonus cards, a timer, and a leaderboard. The game excels in breaking up long and detailed content into several mini-games for employees to complete at will. It also addresses common scenarios by employees that are built on 10 key core behaviors of Tesco employees. The Tesco Compliance Board game is made more accessible to employees due to its modality, as well as its time commitment, as it takes about an hour to complete. Afterwards, employees are awarded feedback based on their performance in the mini-games and their overall mastery of stated learning outcomes. This episode covered why we use games for games-based learning. It focused on games used through a student-centered educational process, as well as how instructors can take on a more gameful approach to teaching and learning. The reasons behind using games for knowledge mastery was covered as applied games-based learning. Specific games were detailed in this episode along with their relevant knowledge domains. Those included connected empathy, hard sciences such as chemistry and biology, and physics, government, and civics, arithmetic operations and numbers, sustainable practices, research, software operations, and rules and procedures. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to learn more, then a great place to start is with my free course on gamification. You can sign up for it at universityxp.com slash gamification. You can also get a full transcript of this episode, including links to references in the description or show notes. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm your host, Dave Ang from Gamespace Learning by University XP. On Experience Points, we explore different ways we can learn from games. If you like this episode, please consider commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Subscribing is absolutely free and ensures that you'll get the next episode of Experience Points delivered directly to you. I'd also love it if you took some time to rate the show. I live to lift others with learning. So if you found this episode useful, consider sharing it with someone who could also benefit. Also, make sure to visit University XP online at universityxp.com. University XP is also on Twitter at university underscore XP and on Facebook and LinkedIn as University XP. Also, feel free to email me anytime. My email address is dave at universityxp.com. Game on.